For anybody who's seen your photos or seen you in person knows that you have like extremely impressive arm development, right? So break that down, break down that uh, routine, because I'm sure there's people listening that would be curious for that as well. Yeah, yeah. So again, biceps for me once a week, do it at the end of chest. And again, I keep it basic. So I'll do a barbell curl of some sort, three sets, eight to four reps. Then I'll get a dumbbell curl, alternate dumbbell curls. I'll either do them seated or standard, same rep range again. So we're looking at eight down to four reps. And then the last exercise, I'll either do a concentration curl or a hammer curl or maybe a concentration cable curl. Two heavier exercises and one one isolation. And that'll be like a, a concentration curl, cable curl, maybe a preacher curl on the bench. And I mix it up. So, you know, I might use the easy bar for four weeks. Then I'll switch to the straight bar. Same with the dumbbells. I might do dumbbells seated. I might do them standing. May do them on an incline, but pretty much I'm just changing angles, movements, the way I'm positioning my body. The actual yeah. exercise is pretty much the same. I guess the only one that differs the most is the concentration movement at the end. You know, preacher curls on a bench or concentration curls, cable concentration curls. Again, yeah, it's fairly basic. Three exercises, three or four sets, once a week. And those are two really hard sets and then the two kind of preparatory sets, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. where I said I, I might get like two reps, I'll probably be going for four, right? Gotcha. And sometimes I'll just get the two because I don't make it. Right. And that's usually on the dumbbell or barbell curl. You would do something like that on or the, the easy bar? Yeah, 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 on the easy bar, straight yeah. bar, or all the dumbbells, yeah. Gotcha. So you were like focused on improving those lifts, no different than say a bench press or pretty much. Yeah. And some people, they, they, I feel like they miss that with arms specifically because they think, oh, it's uh it's not a compound movement and you can't really add load over time as well as you could with say a bench press, which there's truth to that for sure. But that doesn't mean to go so far on the other end of the extreme where all you're doing is kind of fluffing and pumping it with no course, progression. Yeah. Right. That's what I'm gathering, at least from what you're mentioning. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. I mean, I have done higher reps for arms, but again, I just, I don't know, man. I just don't, yeah. I just enjoy doing lower reps. It's going to sure. sound like I'm lazy, right? <laughs> Not at all. They're both hard in their own ways, for sure. Yeah, and yeah. I think it's definitely challenging. Yeah. Yeah. And I think if you don't enjoy one, then it's going to be even harder. So I think that's yeah. why the high rep yeah. stuff for you maybe is, didn't lot, mesh well. A lot of guys like the high reps because you get pumped and all that. And I've never really cared about that. When you do low reps, you don't really get a pump at all, very rarely. I'm just like, yeah, whatever. But there's something fun about being able to, I don't know, dumbbell press 120 or 130 pound dumbbells, right? Or something like of this yeah, nature. Yeah, obviously. But I'm, I'm, I'm not doing that, but yeah. Or when you were, I don't know if you were doing that, but... No, no, I've, I've always been quite relatively weak on the bench compared to my other lifts. Not great for me, I don't know why. No? We always had, like, all my all the guys in the BMDF will know this, and they'll probably laugh, because we always had a joke that my bench wasn't great. So when I did powerlifting, my bench was, compared to my peers, that like they competed in the same weight class as, I think they were benching, like, 160s, 170s, kilos. I was probably, like, down there at, like, 137 or something, mm. 140 maybe, for a single... I think some of it's probably my technique. I just think my technique's maybe not the best on the bench. I think I use my triceps too much. But yeah, I've just never been super heavy on the bench. That could explain the great arm development, though. Well, that's what I always say to people, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I think I'm doing the bench wrong because uh, my triceps are... They're like croissants, yeah. man, the way they're the back there, right? <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. That's probably one one thing that I can attribute to my triceps too, maybe, yeah. So with the chest routine, because I'm sure that you wanted to bring that up, that was an aspect that for you specifically, yeah. what did that routine look like? Again, that was quite basic for a long time. I was doing like an incline bench, flat dumbbell press, dumbbell flies, and weighted dips. And that was kind of what I did for a long time in the early days. And I would alternate the incline and the flat, changing the angle on the bench for the dumbbells, for the flies. And I think when I wanted to start improving my chest i started experimenting with like supersets that type of thing so i'd start throwing in things like cable crossovers or i'd superset them with just straight press-ups did you find it helped i did yeah this was like i'd do this kind of eight ten weeks after the show and i don't know if it helped with like fullness or what i said just now i didn't really get a pump but when i did that kind of stuff you would get more of a pump and maybe it helped with fullness a little bit of detail i guess i wouldn't say my chest like came on massively just from doing that, but I guess it did enhance the look. So, so you do the chest again, you then you hit the biceps after back on its yeah. own. You did shoulders and triceps. So what'd that look like? So shoulders would be seated military shoulder press with a bar. That would be the starting exercise. Like, actually, I tell a lie. I start off with shrugs. So I actually do my traps on the shoulders day. Barbell shrugs, start off with that upright rows. 
then the shoulder press, seated shoulder press with a bar, a follow on lateral raises seated with dumbbells. And then I would do bent over lateral raises from a, for rear delts. And then I'd sometimes call it a day at that. Other days I would chuck in single arm lateral raises on the cable crossover and rear pec deck flies for rear delts. So I might throw in like two exercises for rear delts. And then triceps would be skull crushers, three or four sets, weighted dips or overhead extensions with a dumbbell and cable pushdowns at the end. Okay. The triceps is just three exercises. Same idea as the biceps. Similar rep range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About six hard sets each a week. So yeah. with the sometimes you would hit the weighted dips uh, twice in a week. Yeah, I would, yeah. Um, so for the chest day, obviously, you try and lean forward to kind of emphasize right. the chest more. And then on triceps, you lean back a little bit. Obviously, there's going to be always some crossover, right? So Of course. You do get a bit of overlap. But I believe Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, so chest would be Tuesday for me normally. And then shoulders, triceps would be the Friday. And then you would do the uh, legs on the Monday? Correct, yeah. Uh, so there was even space between the squatting and the deadlifting. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because I'm not normally, even now still, I don't really do too well with recovery. So if I do like a hard leg session, I struggle to deadlift on the Thursday sometimes because my hamstrings and quads and everything are quite sore. So it right. kind of negatively affects the deadlift. So I need that time. Gotcha. It's interesting because if you consider overlap, you were hitting almost everything twice per week in a way, right? Like, I guess, yeah, because in a, the in a way, muscles that come in, yeah, 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 yeah you've got so, those secondary muscles that come in with your lifts, yeah, right. So, yeah, that, you could argue that I could maybe have given myself more time off. Well, not necessarily, that might have been an advantage potentially, but if you were oh, yeah, running, oh, it, yeah, you could look at it from that perspective, yeah. yeah, you could also look at it like, yeah, from a recovery standpoint, if you were running into those types of recovery issues sometimes, yeah, maybe there's yes. an explanation for that for sure. No, I find that interesting because, yeah, obviously, arms are getting definitely hit three times a week if you consider overlap, right? With all your pressing yeah, yeah. and pulling. Yeah, if you look at like quads or something, that's clearly one time, maybe one and a half if you look at the deadlifting, because that does influence yeah. your quads too. Yeah, there's a little bit of it so, going on there. Yeah. But yeah, like you say, shoulders, you obviously got overlap with the triceps and back. Yeah. Yeah, obviously using your biceps a lot and a lot of those back exercises as well. Right, right. Yeah, interesting. So with the routine itself, though, how long would it take you to like a typical, like how long would it last? Average a session? between sort of 60 to 90 minutes. It's never realistic, but I aim for 60 minutes. But realistically, you know, I'm looking at chest, biceps, hour 15, hour 20. Legs is normally like an hour and a half, sometimes an hour and 45. Back, about an hour and 15. And then shoulders, triceps, about the same, hour 15, hour 20. Not too long. Right. And the leg day, what did that look like? So you mentioned you had the squats in there. Yeah, so legs, I've got everything. So I start off with calves, did two exercises, seated calf raise or donkey calf raise. And then we've got squats leg press, leg extension. Sometimes I'll throw in some lunges and then we'll go over to hamstrings. So we're looking at hamstring curls, seated hamstring curls, stiff leg deadlifts. And we've got, a, I never used to do this back in the day, but my new gym has like a single legged hamstring curl that you stand up on. Nice, nice. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, back in the day, I would, I would alternate between back squats and front squats. Right. One week back, one week front kind of thing? Uh, no, I do like six or eight week blocks. So I do like okay. six weeks on back squats and then switch six weeks on front squats. I'm trying to think of any other variations I used to throw in. You know, it's interesting when you mentioned the hamstrings were still torched by the time you got to back day for the deadlifts. Yeah. Now it kind of makes sense with the stiff legged deadlifts and then the leg curls, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's all on one day. Yeah. So it's like yeah. that's my longest, probably hardest workout. Yeah. As much as I'm not doing like loads of sets i guess the volume stacks up did you get sore a lot after workouts legs quite often chest not so much back i'd say somewhere in the middle shoulders not really triceps yeah gotcha let's break down like a typical back day for you like how did that look back is like very basic it's one of my most basic workouts so i start off with like wide grip pull-ups with weights four sets then i'll switch over well i do this in different orders to be fair but the exerciser would be wide grip pull-ups, four sets, weighted deadlifts for four sets again, seated low pulley rows, again, four sets, and then I'll finish off with like a barbell row because my gym's quite busy. So I like to deadlift at the beginning, but sometimes I end up deadlifting at the end. So it just depends on who's on what bit of equipment. That's it for back. Four exercises, pretty basic. Generally four sets. If I'm feeling a bit tired, I might do three sets on like the pulley row or something. Rep ranges are all going to be 10 to... So I could do a 10, 8, 6, 4. Sometimes I'll do an 8, 8, 6, 4. 
something like that. In terms of like variation, I'll just switch it up every maybe seven or eight weeks. So rather than doing a T-bar, uh, a barbell row, I'll switch to a T-bar and I might change the attachment on the pulley row and I switch between wide grip pull-ups, overhand and reverse grip pull-ups with a sort of shoulder width grip. So it's very basic, really. You know, no, no fancy stuff. Most of what I do is, I'd say predominantly barbells and dumbbells. Obviously, things like legs, so, you know, hamstrings and stuff. You have to use machines, shoulders as well. For the most part, I just stick to dumbbells, barbells, bodyweight exercises. And so your goal was to get stronger in those lifts, essentially? Is that Was that a big thing for you? Yeah, I mean, it's not like the be-all and end-all, but I like pushing myself in terms of strength. And obviously, with strength, you see the... The size coming along. Obviously, my reps are quite low, right? So some would maybe say that my reps are too low for growth. But I guess my reps drop quite low in most of the compounds. I might keep it a little bit higher in some of maybe the isolation movements. But yeah, I found that that's just what I enjoy doing in terms of pushing myself. And I use that as like a mark of progress, really. Am I getting stronger? And the size kind of follows along with that. And as far as like training to failure, were you leaving that for just certain sets or was that something you did regularly? Um, yes and no. I've always trained on my own pretty much. I've never really had a training partner, but the gyms I train in, you know how it is. The guys and girls in the gym know you, so you can call somebody over for a spot. But in terms of failure, I've never 